Good day. Welcome. This is your Daily Med with Lady V. Grace, peace from God our Father and from our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. As we have been talking about the benefits of daily prayer and we look at Paul's prayer for the Colossians in 1 Colossians 1 verse 9 and 10. He says to us, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the scripture gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. He says, and when this prayer is being prayed, that you will be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. He says, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Awesome prayer that the apostle would pray for the believers. Sometimes we as believers wonder how to pray for those that are the missionaries and the evangelists and the apostles and the prophets and the pastor and the teacher leaders we have never met. The Apostle Paul had never met the Colossians but he faithfully prayed he prayed for them, even not knowing them personally. His prayer teaches us how to pray for others, whether we know them or not. We can go to God in prayer and make various requests on their behalf. What are a few things we can ask God to help them with. Of course, we can ask God to help them to understand what is it that he wants them to do while they do his work. We can pray that they gain spiritual wisdom, that is to do it God's way. We can pray that they honor and please God, and that is by doing is well. Jesus says to us when he came to earth, I came to do the will of my Father. He says it is my meat that I do my Father's will. So he wants the leaders to do his will. We can pray that God produce every kind of good fruit in them. We can pray that they learn to know God better and better each day by reading and studying and meditating upon his word, by praying to him as Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, he will show them some things that he need them to know. He will also hear and answer their prayer as long as there is no hindrance to that prayer. We can pray for them that they be strengthened with God's glorious power. Remember in and of themselves they cannot do it. They need the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So we can pray for them that they may have great endurance, enduring to the end, and in all of this uh, that they will be patient. We can pray that they be filled with joy, not just uh, 
enduring, but having joy while working for the Lord. We can pray that they will give thanks always because there will be circumstances that come along their path that are difficult circumstances, challenges when one is out on the mission field doing the work of God. But we can pray that God will, as he, we say, strengthen them and allow them to have joy in doing this, knowing that there is a reward for it. We can also pray that they show love and compassion to their fellow men, to those whom they have been or want to be a light, want to be a witness. And so all believers have this same basic need. All believers can pray this basic prayer. So when we don't know how to pray for someone, we can use Paul's prayer pattern because he did it for the Colossians, knowing that I do not have to know them to pray for them. We constantly say there is no distance either in prayer. It doesn't matter how far or how near the person is, we can pray for them. So the Apostle Paul lists five benefits God gives all believers through Christ, and he wants us to make the use of these benefits. He has enabled us, the apostle says, he has enabled us to share in his inheritance. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 21. He has rescued us from Satan's kingdom of darkness and have made us his children and has brought us into the light. He has brought us into his eternal kingdom. Ephesians 1 verse 5 through 6. He has purchased our freedom from sin and judgment with his blood. Hebrews 9 and verse 12. He has given, he has forgiven all our sins. Ephesians 1 and verse 7. And surely enough, we can thank him for what we have received in Christ. All the good and precious gifts and promises that he has made unto us, we must remember on a daily basis to be thankful. In verse 13, we realize from our lesson, the Colossians fear the unseen forces of darkness. But the Apostle Paul says that true believers have been transformed from darkness to light, being transferred from slavery to freedom, being transferred from guilt to forgiveness, and from the power of Satan to the power of God. So because we have been rescued from a rebel kingdom to serve the rightful king or conduct should reflect our allegiance. Song says, I pledge allegiance to the Lamb with all my strength, with all I am, and I will seek to honor His commands. We will seek to be obedient to Him. Our allegiance is now not to the evil one, but to the King of Kings, and to the Lord of Lords. Therefore, whatsoever he says in his words, we want to adapt them as our own. We want to believe them. And therefore, today we are saying, let us pray for our missionaries. Let us pray for all the leaders, those that are gone maybe far away, even from their very homeland, to be missionaries spreading the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us remember them in our prayers. God bless you. Thank you again for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please share. Also, leave a comment and continue to visit my YouTube channel, 
Daily Med with Lady D.